What's up, everyone? My close friends know that I love to DJ. I find that DJing is an incredibly meditative practice that requires me to be somewhat in sync with the music, the energy of the participants who are dancing, and myself. DJing is a skill which, if done right, can teach you about how to synthesize between human beings of different backgrounds and bring harmony to a room. Perhaps I'm a synthesizer by nature, due in part to the fact that I grew up in a Christian home that observed Jewish holidays. Synthesis was constantly a topic of conversation, and it's one of those things where once you see it, you can't unsee it. So now, when I'm on social media, especially Twitter, I'm constantly looking for overlap between seemingly disparate viewpoints, like, say, woke liberals and staunch conservatives, or even classic liberals these days. Recently, I stumbled upon a tweet posted by Wesley Yang that inspired me to find just that, synthesis. Have you ever thought about your car personality? What's your vibe? Do you like the classic, fully gas-powered engine? Are you a best-of-both-worlds type? Driving on battery power while keeping gas on reserve just in case? Or are you more inclined to choose a convenient hybrid ride? Whichever your vibe, there's a Hyundai Tucson to match and powertrain to get you there. Hyundai's 2023 Tucson lineup pairs the tech you want with sleek and stylish designs. They paid attention to all the details, the seats, the dash, the available panoramic roof. You name it, Hyundai thought of it. All while making sure each trim has enough room to hold space for your grocery runs, festival nights, and tailgates. Okay, Hyundai. When it comes to your journey, Hyundai is there for every mile. Visit HyundaiUSA.com to learn more about the 2023 Hyundai Tucson. The 2023 Tucson plug-in hybrid is only sold in California, Colorado, Connecticut, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Here's what that tweet says. Now, As I read this tweet, it dawned on me that the woke is partially right and wrong on this particular issue. And they're right for astoundingly conservative reasons. And by conservative, I mean wanting to preserve and transmit the sacred aspects of Western culture to future generation. I agree with Wesley that Crystal, the girl who tweeted, is wrong about the pressure to read everything being about capitalism. The need that she feels to read everything, to consume everything, is not necessarily about capitalism. However, Crystal is touching upon something that Socrates, that great forefather of Western civilization, himself pointed out about writing. Namely, that it wasn't the most effective means of communication. Now, there's a Substack piece that corresponds with this particular video essay, so there is an irony in the fact that I'm pointing this out. But keep in mind, that Socrates believed in dialogue as a means of communication over all other forms. Dialogue, not the written word, was oral. It was alive and it was dynamic in a way that the written word simply is not. In a dialogue that one of his pupils, probably Plato, wrote down, Socrates says the following. You know, Phaedrus, writing shares a strange feature with painting. The offsprings of painting stand there as if they are alive. But if anyone asks them anything, they remain most solemnly silent. The same is true of written words. You think they were speaking as if they had some understanding. But if you question anything that has been said because you want to learn more, it continues to signify just that very same thing, forever. When it has once been written down, every discourse roams about everywhere, reaching indiscriminately those with understanding no less than those who have no business with it. And it doesn't know to whom it should speak, and to whom it should not. And when it is faulted and attacked unfairly, it always needs its father's support. Alone, it can neither defend itself nor come to its own support. Now, if you go back and read Crystal's point about how reading isn't just about absorbing as many words on as many pages as quickly as possible, and that's a direct quote, there is, dare I say it, a synergy here between what she's pointing out and what Socrates is pointing out about the written word. The written word can be incredibly deceptive. People can confuse words for the thing itself, like confusing a map for the territory, 
which I think is actually what's happening with accusations of being ableist that are thrown around in our culture today. But that's another story for another time. Historically speaking, the act of reading something in isolation is a very recent thing. Communities used to be far more embodied in their relationship with words and in storytelling in general. Communities had oral traditions, and these were part and parcel of the development of Western civilization. Think about Homer's The Odyssey. Stories like those were not traditionally read from a book, but performed. A bard would come and actually sing these stories, and people would sit around a kind of campfire and listen, or even actively participate in the telling of the story. While much of these traditions exist in non-weird cultures, and weird here stands for Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic, they very much used to exist in the West and are part of our rich heritage. And I believe it is imperative to revive those traditions. Now, obviously there are several misfires in Crystal's tweet. We can't revivify these traditions without treating certain aspects of the West as sacred and without knowing those aspects of history in the first place. If we do, we'll actually just cannibalize ourselves and get stuck in the culture wars. But there are also several kernels of truth in what Crystal says. I just had this conversation with my brother from another mother, Idal Sanes, so be sure to check out the podcast on that soon. But we talked about how the hyper-technological ways of being in the West can atrophy our capacity to be in community with each other. And how, yes, that includes being able to read and respond to each other effectively as human beings, something that Wesley seemed to actually object to. Now, I think our failure to do this is a failure to become consummate with reality itself. There are people in the tech world who recognize this too, like Jordan Hall and Game B folks, and even some people working on DAOs and crypto. They also sense something is amiss. And the Disney film WALL-E actually predicted this atrophying. It depicted a world in which human beings just became glued to their screens and are literally out of touch with reality. This is antithetical to what humans were designed to be able to do, call and respond. You can think of call and response as a musical modality that is present within all human beings. When I think of it, I think about the African-American Baptist tradition, where a preacher might say something and the church is moved to respond spontaneously and organically. If you listen to some of Dr. King's sermons, you'll hear this dynamic going on in some of the earlier recordings. I also think of call and response as what is necessary when you want to learn any kind of craft that requires your whole being. Acting on stage requires this. Learning how to ride a motorcycle requires this. Playing an instrument well requires this. Getting in right relationship with reality itself so you can respond to the unknown, an ever-present fact of reality, the very mystery at the heart of being itself requires this. But because we have become fixated on predictability and absolute order, we have started foreclosing our responsibility, which is quite literally the ability to respond. Isn't it funny that responsibility, which is a conservative value, is precisely what's being called for by folks like Crystal and others who might consider themselves pretty deeply anti-conservative? Maybe there is understanding between the woke and conservatism after all. Finally, I think there's actually a nexus of ideas that conservatives and people who identify as woke actually have in common. And it's number one, a matter of synthesizing those ideas, and number two, deliberately entering into communities of practice so we can embody those ideas, mind, body, and spirit. I don't think we can act responsibly if the value system we deem worthy is one that says, well, actually, the only thing I want to be responsive to, any and everything, is my reality of technology. That's not going to work. But I suspect that Crystal and others like her are grappling with how the Cartesian mind-body split, the thing that says the only thing that actually matters are our minds. And this was developed, and I'm being really reductive here, but it was developed by Rene Descartes. That has resulted in deep alienation in weird cultures. Those ideas came out of the Enlightenment, which also produced good things. But conservatives who take the West seriously must confront and grapple with that. We don't want the dystopia portrayed in Wally. We want spirit. We want connection and the re-enchantment of the world. We desperately crave and need it, now more than ever. And I actually think that's something that both the woke and conservatives can get behind. Thanks for watching.